Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this class, we are going to see current affairs of December 6, 2023. So first we are going to take PDF of Hindu, that is Delhi edition. And we are going to pick out which are the articles important from our examination point of view. And later on, we are going to draw some perspectives, like in how many dimensions we can think about that topic. And from how many subjects point of view, we can interlink the same topic. So in this way here, that will helpful to improve your thought process. And that interlinking will be helpful to write a good essay in multidimensional manner and even to write mains answers. So this type of perspective is important. And especially the beginners who are starting reading this newspaper. So they will be reading each and every word which is present here. It is not at all important. It is not the way to read newspaper for competitive examinations. So I will make you to learn like how to read newspaper for competitive examination point of view. And how to do research regarding some basic facts. And even I can explain you like how to interlink this dynamic syllabus with your static subjects. So how to cover both. So all these things that you are going to get if you watch this video completely. And I can say that if you are watching this Rathod's IS News Analysis continuously for 3 to 4 months without uh, any disturbance or without discontinuing this, then I will ensure you that you are going to learn how to read newspaper for sure. And how to use these articles to write introduction and conclusion, that thing also we will be teaching here. So this is a front page of the Hindu. The first article here is Congress announces Ravant Reddy as CM of Telangana. So this is about the politics of a state Telangana. So don't bother about the politics. Okay. And because of this, this article is not relevant from our examination point of view. And next one is Mekong makes landfall in Andhra Pradesh breaks havoc. So because of this cyclone, which originated in the Bay of Bengal, it is hit in the coastal states, especially Chennai and Andhra Pradesh, they were in havoc now. So heavy rainfall and because of this heavy rainfall in Chennai, so even flights have been stopped. And here in Andhra Pradesh, heavy rains with very high speed winds. And even three people they died because of this rain related accidents. And even because of this havoc that also altered power supply. It also affected power supply in many areas. And now the cyclone which is moving towards north. So if you are talking about direction of movement of cyclones. So for example if cyclone which is originated here. So it will be moving towards west. And like this. And in this way. So it will be moving in this way. So because of this here. The western part. Okay. So western part of the cyclone will be affected first. And again this northern part of the point of cyclone origination. So which is being affected. So as of now here Tamil Nadu affected and Andhra Pradesh affected. And it is going to affect even Bengal and Odisha. Right. So this is about this topic. And actually here. It's already made landfall. So there will be no impact in the northern states much. So here you have to know about naming of cyclones. Yesterday I gave you homework like. So what is the mechanism or which countries will be giving the names. So many students they said that. So this name it is given by. One student said it is Maldives but it is not Maldives. It is Myanmar. So Myanmar gave this, gave this name of Mekong. So I will be showing you the list of names. Okay don't worry. And I will be telling you like how the naming process of the cyclones will happen and what is the criteria that you have to follow regarding the naming of cyclones. And this topic is important from your GS paper 1 and even from your GS paper 3 under disaster management. Okay and we can also if you go into deep you can also connect this topic with GS paper 3 under environment and ecology. Why? Because of climate change. So because of climate change, we are facing some events or havoc. So for example, this is increasing of frequency of cyclones. So increasing of frequency of cyclones in Bay of Bengal 
and Arabia and Sea it is one example of climate change related events okay so in all these dimensions we can think about this article and now let us move on so next topic is global stock take global stock take draft calls for phasing out of fossil fuels so actually we are having this COP28 which is going on in this UAE in Dubai so in this event so they talked about this global stock take and we have to phase out that means we have to decrease use of fossil fuels especially coal okay so here you can connect this topic with GS paper 3 under science and technology we will be studying about different type of energy yes or no energy chapter so we have renewable and we have non-renewable we have renewable and non-renewable so we have to focus on that and apart from that we can also connect this topic with environment and ecology like so what are the INDCs of India what are the INDCs of India and what are the steps that can take to control climate change or to decrease global warming okay so these are the some important things that you have to remember regarding this topic and next topic is glaciers shrank one meter a year in a decade says world meteorological organization so this article is talking about melting of glacier so here you have to see like what are the causes of melting of glacier that means what were the reasons exactly so apart from that reasons you have to see what are the measures can be taken and apart from this you have to think about what will be the impacts if there is melting of glacier is happening that will leads to increasing of sea level or sea level rise so whenever the sea level rise is happening what happen this coastal areas they will be inundated so whenever this coast areas are inundated, the people who are present in this region, they will be moving inside. That will lead to socio-economic conflicts in India. And not only in India, across the world, we will be having very small islands. So these islands, they are facing threat. So recently, Vanuatu, so Vanuatu expressed its concern regarding the increasing of sea level. So there is a very much threat to these islands they will they are very much vulnerable because of increasing of sea level or rise of sea level so there is a verge of verge of inundation so in future we can't see islands whenever there is increasing of sea level rise so all these things are very very important so this article says that from 2011 to 2020 so within one decade that is nothing but around 10 years there is rise in economic losses because of extreme weather. So the drop in deaths was due to advancements in early warning system and disaster management. So even though we are facing a lot of uh, weather related events like uh, wildfires and heat waves, droughts, floods, etc. So even though now we are seeing there is less number of deaths. Why? Because we are having advanced early warning system and as well as better disaster management. So this is also the first decade that depleted ozone hole visibly showed recovery. So in this one decade, yes, whatever the ozone hole which happened, so we are seeing there is a recovery in this ozone hole. And heat waves which caused highest human casualties in tropical uh, regions. And even tropical cyclones also affected a lot the economy of the countries. And climate finance nearly doubled, it needs to increase sevenfold by decades end. So this says that yes, we came up with increasing of this climate finance, but that had to be increased to seven times to address this climate change related events. So all these things are given in this article. So here you have to focus on what is this World Meteorological Organization. So what its mandate. Okay, so this is very, very important. And these are the very important articles that appear in your front page. Okay, let us move on. So in the city page, I found nothing much important.
yes you have to see one more important topic that is mahapari nirvan divas okay so mahapari nirvan divas so what is this mahapari nirvan divas so please let me know in the comment box and you can move on to the states page so most of the articles are political articles in our states page today because of elections and election results and for next one week we will be seeing this only yes you can directly move on to this editorial page so most of the pages are filled with advertisements only that you can see right you can directly move on to this editorial page see the page full of advertisements so this article it is regarding mizo national front okay so here this article is not at all useful and here you can see one article that is honest reckoning major world economies seem unwilling to move away from fossil fuel so this article is talking about phasing out of fossil fuel is talking about phasing out of fossil fuel yes fossil fuel is one of the important contributor for releasing of greenhouse gas emission into atmosphere for example carbon dioxide methane etc so if you want to control or curb this global warming and if you want to achieve this paris climate deal or paris agreement yes you have to phase out this fossil fuels or decrease the use of fossil fuels or completely stall the use of fossil fuels so this is the thing which mainly said and we are going to see this topic in detail and next topic here it is about cyclone mekong alone was not responsible for chennai troubles so here we are going to see about naming of cyclones naming of cyclones and the list of names of cyclones were given by different countries and this is loknithi page so there is nothing much important leave this simply and even this page is also loknithi and directly you can move on to this news page yes here you can see two important articles the first one is india approves or india provides dollar 250 million line of credit to kenya so here you have to focus on this word line of line of credit so what is it so especially if you are uh, starting reading international relations so with many countries we will be having this line of credit that means if country which is not having the enough finances so it can borrow within the country and it can move towards other countries and it can borrow from other countries so one such mechanism of borrowing from other country is called as line of credit that is also called as soft loan it is not a grant it is a soft loan that loan need to be repaid by the country back clear so here you have to see where is kenya located and which are the countries sharing border with kenya in the map so that is important from your map based thing and next topic is us official raises panum plot case ask india to probe so there are some differences which are going on between india and us relations that is regarding this panum so us says that india is planning to kill panum in the in us okay so this is about this and in this textual context you can take, you can see this important article that is the journey towards a plastic free world so it is talking about plastic pollution so here we have to focus on especially single use plastic so we have to talk about this single use plastic 
So already India came with a pledge of ending the use of single use plastic. But whether it is practically done or not, you have to see. Okay. And here you have to see about what is this INC, that is Intergovernmental Negotiating Committee, which comes in the United Nations Environment Program. So what it said in the recent meet. That topic is very, very important. And this article is important from your Environment and Ecology, which comes in the GS Paper 3. And it is important from both your prelims and as well as your mains. That's it in this text and context. You can directly move on to this world page. So here you can see one article that is UK Titans. UK Titans immigration rules to curb record high migrant numbers. This article is talking about immigration rules. So what is the meaning of immigration? So why there is tightening of this immigration rules by UK? So those things that you have to think. Yeah, in this business page, you can see one important article that is about PMI, Purchasing Manager Index. So, every month we will be getting PMI separately for manufacturing sector and separately for service sector. So, this article is talking about services in the month of November. So, in the month of November, service sector drags over all private sector activity. It is one year low. So here there is low performance of services in the month of November. So here the global S&P Global India Services Business Activity Index which slide to 56.9. Earlier in month of October it was like 58.4. Okay. So the firms they remain positive about the prospects in a year ahead. So there are some signs of optimism is fading on worries about faster inflation. So here the firms you are saying that yes in future we are going to run good. Because of in impact of inflation that led to decreasing of providing of services. So this is the thing which mainly said here. And these are the most important topics which are relevant from your examination point of view. Okay, and now let us try to see the notes. And let us try to analyze these topics in detail. So if you want to get the notes of this class, you can join the Telegram channel. Link is given in description box. So this is the notes part. So now let us see the first article it is about glacier strike that is melting of glaciers. So usually this article is important from which subject? Environment and ecology point of view. So here in this decade, decade means nothing but 10 years that is 2011 to 2020. In this decade though it is the warmest ever recorded in the history. So we saw the lowest number of deaths from extreme events. So why we have good early warn system and we are having good disaster management plans. So if you see the details, it says that so between this 2011 to 2020, so since 1950, when there was not a single short term event with 10,000 deaths or more, which is seen according to this global climate, 2011 to 2020, a decade of acceleration. So in this report said that even though we had lot of chemical uh, climate change related events, so there is decreased number of deaths in this decade. So report also says that this was the first decade that the depleted ozone hole visibly showed recovery. So in this in this decade also we are seeing that there is recovery of this ozone hole, and glaciers they were measured around the world they thinned by approximately one meter per year because of increasing of global warming. There is melting of this glacier this is happening. That too at a very fast rate of 1 meter per year. And this article also says that Greenland, Antarctica, they lost about 38 percentage of ice. So how much percentage? 38 percentage of ice which has been lost between this 2001 to 2010 period. And this report also mentioned that Uttarakhand rock avalanche which happened in 2021 which triggered from a breach in the Nanda Devi glacier. So what happened because of this melting of this Nanda Devi glacier that led to this Uttarakhand rock avalanche. And this report which also said that human caused climate change 
it also said that human caused climate change significantly increases the risk from extreme heat events okay so because of this extreme heat events so there will be the faster melting of glaciers and heat waves they were responsible for the highest number of human casualties so in this decade so because of this heat waves that is the one of the leading cause for increasing of human casualty casualty means nothing but deaths so while tropical cyclones caused the most economic damage so economic damage is caused by cyclones because because of loss of life loss of property and there will be a lot of uh, financial thing which is included if you are talking about rehabilitation reconstruction etc so i want to give you one main question so please try to write this answer for this question enumerate that means you have to give just numbers uh, regarding the main challenges behind the rapid melting of glaciers around the world so enumerate the main reasons behind the rapid melting of glaciers around the world explain its impact on global climate change and human life also give some effective strategies to combat glacier melting so for this question i will be coming up with the model answer in today's uh, i think by tomorrow or day after tomorrow i will be posting a video regarding how to write answer for this question still then so please write answer for this question and you can check the answer okay that's the model answer that we are going to post either tomorrow or day after tomorrow for sure and next topic is global stock take global stock take draft calls for phasing out of fossil fuels so here we are going to focus on what is this global stock take because this concept is very important from your prelims and as well as from your mains so now let us see this topic in detail first let us see the context for the first time a key document being negotiated at united nations annual climate summit so in this united nation annual climate summit so for the first time the key document has been negotiated so it has underlined the need for the world to do away with all fossil fuels so it is saying that we have to do away with the fossil fuels as the first week of negotiations at this cop 28 So, as the first week of negotiations at this COP twenty eight nears an end, so the latest version of this global stock take includes a clause committing all signatories to an orderly and just phase out of fossil fuels. So, in the first week of negotiations at this COP twenty eight, so it is going to be end. So, in that meeting, they talked about this global stock take, and they also said that this global stock take it need to include a clause. of committing all signatories they have to phase out this fossil fuels so what is this global stock take so it refers to a proposed five year review so it is a five year review of the impact of countries climate change actions so what are the actions you are taking so how it is impacting this climate change so they are going to have a five year review so it is called as this global stock take and under this paris agreement every country must present a climate action plan for 5 year cycles so they need to have an action plan for 5 year cycles and the first global stock take was scheduled for 2023 so first global stock take was scheduled for 2023 under this paris agreement so when we came up with this paris agreement or paris climate deal in year 2015 So, two thousand fifteen onwards, the countries are taking some steps, but the result is, I can say, it is negative, and we have failed actually. So, we didn't achieve the target of this Paris climate deal, and it will assess whether the net result of climate actions being taken was consistent with the goal of keeping the increase in the global average temperature from pre-industrial times within two degrees centigrade or not. i will also help the world to determine whether it needs to do more so if there is a need of doing more so how much we have to do so all these things will be determined and even it also recognizes money needs to be made available for loss and damage and energy transition in these developing countries and next topic is honest reckoning so this article which is talking about fossil fuels again 
So we are going to see this topic in detail. So if we're talking about this topic, which is focusing on especially phasing out of fossil fuels. So what are the examples of these fossil fuels? We have coal, we have diesel, petrol, right? So whatever we are using, that is nothing but the fossil fuel. So fossil fuel is seen in which kind of rocks? Igneous or sedimentary or metamorphic? Yes, in sedimentary rocks, we can see this fossil fuels. So if you're talking about this article, which is saying that we have to decrease this global climate, okay, climate temperature at least 1.5 degrees centigrade. Okay, so here we have to decrease this uh, temperature of 1.5 degrees centigrade when we are comparing with the temperature in this pre-industrial level. Okay, so now what happened because of the steps were taken by the different countries and the governments of different countries. Now that 1 degree centigrade is crossed and we have to do a lot to achieve that 0.5 degree centigrade of decreasing of climate change. So this is the thing which mainly said. So here the global pledges to cut. So they are talking about cut emissions. And here we have to see how to limit this warming to 1.5 degree centigrade. So now, so now the world requires three times more renewable energy capacity. So to achieve that 0.5 percentage of uh, 0.5 degree centigrade of decreasing of temperature. Yes, your countries, they need to take what are the steps that have been taken till now. So we have to triple the effects or efforts. Okay. So we have to triple the efforts of adopting of renewable energy by 2030. So that is we can achieve the target. And that there is a wide global consensus on the need for this tripling was first formally articulated in this New Delhi leaders declaration. So in the September, we had this G20 summit, right? So that had been held. So in that uh, meet itself, so we talked that here not only single country can take the measures, but all countries, they have to come together to take the measures so that we can achieve our common target of decreasing of global warming. And in this Dubai summit, that is in the G20, uh, sorry, COP28 summit, so it was perceived that it would be widely endorsed by it would be widely endorsed by a large group of about 190 countries signatory to United Nations Convention on Climate. And even it turns out that so far 118 countries they have endorsed the pledge. So as of now 118 countries they have endorsed and they signed the pledge but India and China they abstained. So it is one cause of concern because India and China they are the top okay two in three top most emitter. So first one is US, the second one is China and third one is India. So here China and India they abstain to sign this. So because of this it is one cause of concern and India has positioned itself and India has positioned itself as a champion for renewable energy. So India has championed itself for renewable energy and its 2030 targets as articulated in its formal and here we are talking about this INDCs, that is National Determined Contributions. And we are focusing on tripling the renewable energy capacity to 500 gigawatts from current 170 gigawatts. Currently, we have target of 175 gigawatts, right? We have to increase it to 500 gigawatts. And we have to curtail the use of fossil fuels to decrease this temperature, okay, or global warming. So coal fired plants are responsible for 70% of India's greenhouse gas emissions because almost most of the energy that we are getting that is from thermal energy and coal is an example of fossil fuels which release lot of emissions into atmosphere. So it is contributing 70% as you can think how much it is releasing. So if you are converting this uh, non-renewable uh, towards renewable means so we can save this right we can save this emissions and we will be decreasing the global warming for sure and developed countries that have made commitments to give up coal often they have other large fossil fuel resources as backup so whenever they are not using this uh, coal they will be using other fossil fuels like natural gas etc right and united states with joined 56 other countries at dubai in a commitment to completely eschew coal for its energy use by 2035 
and you have said a promise you have kept a promise like so we are going to end the use of fossil fuels especially coal by 2035 and we have to wait and watch so what it will do in future and here us only draws about 20% of its energy from coal and at least 55% from oil and gas so actually here if it is decreasing coal means it can increase the use of energy from oil or gas or else it move towards renewable energy sources so this is the thing which mainly said in this article and now let us see next topic it is about shared blame so this article is talking about cyclone which originated in bay of bengal so here this topic is important from both your disaster management and as well as from your geography point of view so in today's class i said like how many perspectives or how many dimensions you can think about this topic from geography point of view so now we are going to discuss about the naming of this cyclone that's it so cyclone mekong is the first cyclone to cross andhra pradesh coast okay it is the first cyclone to cross crosses andhra pradesh coast after cyclone gulab which developed in september 2021 so after the cyclone gulab okay so now it is cyclone mekong so which crosses this andhra pradesh coast so what is a cyclone cyclone which originated over the southwest of bay of bengal and the name mekong which is given by which country that is myanmar that means strength and resilience okay strength and resilience upon the formation of the cyclone cyclone mekong will become the fourth in bay of bengal cyclonic storm and is the sixth which is formed in indian ocean 2023 so here you can understand because of this climate change events there is increased incidence of cyclones origination in this uh, bay of bengal and as well as arabian sea and as well as you can say either in the ocean as well so if you see the map here so here the cyclone which had been originated and this dark red it is the low pressure area and it is moving like this and is hitting this coast and now it is moving towards northwards okay so here this part chennai which has been affected and many coastal areas of this andhra pradesh is going to affected and even in our state of telangana from last 4 days we are having a drizzling and we are having a small rainfall and even everything it is very very dark and even even if i'm seeing from window now it is around 6 o'clock 6:30 now so it is very very dark and even there is no sunshine properly okay so because of this we will be having weather related impacts so whenever i'm driving to the recording room in this morning in this cool weather so i'm facing the issue like <clears throat> throat issue i can't speak uh, fastly and smoothly i think that you can hear in my voice right so if you're talking about this naming of cyclones world meteorological organization that is wmo oversees the management of rotating name list tailored for each tropical cyclone basin so we're talking about this naming so the names will be given by the different countries okay so cyclone which is originating in various uh, oceans like uh, indian ocean etc right so globally we have re, uh, we have tropical cyclone warning center and we have regional specialized meteorological center so we're talking about there are six uh, regional specialized meteorological centers across the world and the member nations of this they will propose the names of tropical cyclones for example we have indian regional organization which is comprising 13 uh, nations and whatever the nations which are giving the names of from these 13 names so they will be uh, they will be present in a box and on this uh, name and on this uh, names which is given by the different countries so we will be taking the names okay and if you see here what are the guidelines so guidelines here is the proposed name should be neutral to a politics or it should not be having any political figure or religious beliefs or should not affect any culture or gender so here you can see so how the names are placed in the columns so it is a column 1 column 2 column 3 and column 4 so these are the countries who are giving names okay for example here we have bangladesh india iran maldives myanmar oman pakistan qatar saudi sri lanka thailand uae and iran so here already we used this name gulab gulab is given by pakistan already we used this oman yas taukte right gatti nisarga and we also used this uh, sitrang mocha and now here we are at here okay mekong okay here we have this name mekong 
and we use this uh, name Biprajoy like that. So in this way, we are following this column wise names. So next will be like Remal, next will be Asna, Dana, Fengal. So like that, we will be having the names of the cyclones. So what are the other guidelines? The first one here is name should be chosen in such a way that it does not hurt any sentiments or of any group or a population across the globe and should not be very rude and clear in nature. So these are some guidelines that we have to follow before giving the names. And next one here is India provides dollar 250 million line of credit to Kenya. So here your homework is you have to open the map and you have to see where is this Kenya located and which are the countries sharing boundary with Kenya and please let me know in the comment box. Don't forget. Okay. So here India provides dollar 250 million line of credit to Kenya. So if you see context, it says that India on Tuesday extended dollars 250 million line of credit for modernization of agriculture in Kenya. So this line of credit is for modernization of agriculture in Kenya. So if you see details, it says that announcing the initiative, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said both sides they will carry out joint military exercises. So India and Kenya, they are going to have this joint military exercises and they will be collaborated in counter-terror project as well. Okay, and they will be also having some important projects. So we are not having that much details regarding that. So we have to wait and see so how we are going to improve relations with Kenya. And you have to see what is this line of credit. So the line of credit is not a grant, okay, but it is like a soft loan. So soft loan means there will be the very low interest rate or sometimes there will be no interest. So it is provided on concessional interest rates to developing countries. And the country which is borrowing this loan, so they have to be repaid the loan. And this line of credit also helps to promote exports of Indian goods and services. Okay, it will be, it will be also helpful for exporting the Indian goods and services. So this is the about this line of credit. And now let us see the next topic it is about plastic free world. So if you see context, it says that we had recent meet under this United Nations Environment Program that is Intergovernmental Negotiating Committee. Intergovernmental Negotiation Committee under UNEP met in Nairobi and they had third round of negotiations to develop international legally binding instrument to end plastic pollution. So they had a meet in this meet they talked about how to end this plastic pollution. So under this United Nations Assembly Resolution, INC is responsible for delivering global plastic treaty. So it have to come up with a treaty with all the countries and we have to end the use of single use plastics by 2025. So if you see details, it says that this INC was a make for break opportunity because countries came together to negotiate the zero draft. Okay, they came up together to negotiate the zero draft text and this is developed by committee secretariat. And actually it includes various obligations and as well as various control measures like how to control this plastic pollution. And this zero draft which is prepared by secretariat which is having the strong options. And if any country which is signing that it should be legally binding. Okay, so the action should be the legally binding and they have to take actions compulsory for addressing of this plastic pollution. But during this negotiation member states they managed to water down their core obligations. And they focused especially on high impact elements like primary polymer production, chemicals of concern, problematic and short lived plastic, trade of plastic and financial mechanism. So these are some important things they talked about. And next one here is African group of countries and some small island developing countries. They played a very important role in this meet. And their submissions they stood out from the rest as they championed the voices of waste pickers and indigenous people and approached the treaty from a human rights and public health perspective. So because of this plastic pollution is having a lot of impact on human health. So recently there are some articles which said that in our human blood also we have microplastic. 
so that much that much thing so we have habituated to use this plastic so if you go to anywhere like even if you see if you're buying the tea so tea uh, if you're making it parcel so they are uh, making parcel in the plastic covers very hot hot tea in a plastic cover what happens the plastic will be melting and that will be entering into our body and simultaneously this microplastic will be also enter into our bloodstream right so because of this we have to take some urgent steps to manage this plastic pollution so here in this context you have to know about the great pacific garbage patch you have to know about this great pacific garbage patch and even you can connect this topic with microplastics you can connect this topic with microplastic and its impact so all these things are very very important and these are some important articles which appear in our today's hindu newspaper and one more announcement i want to make so we are going to start this prelims booster course from this monday so what are the highlights so we are going to give you day to day schedule okay so on this day you have to read these topics so based on that day to day schedule you will be having test every day you will be having test every day okay based on the topics of that day and you will be having revision holiday every sunday so every sunday you have to revise the topics that you have read in that day and next one here is you will be having live classes you will be having live classes so in that live classes so there are four mentors one will be me and one will be the politics class teacher and next one is history teacher and one will be tanya ma'am so we four will be taking the live classes and you will be having at least weekly three live classes okay so you'll be having weekly three live classes and in that live class we are going to discuss how to read the subject and important topics and current affairs will be discussed and we are also going to discuss some important questions that we gave in the test most of the students who did wrong and one more thing here is you will be also having prelims test series so the plan of this prelims booster course is first you have to complete your major subjects like polity history uh, economy geography like that and after that from march onwards you will be having the test okay that will be complete test along with the negative marking okay so for all these things for all these things the cost here is around 4500 rupees only okay for this course it is around 4500 rupees so you can join this prelims booster course it is very very useful and i can say that this course will improve your score so if you are getting around 50 to 60 now that will helpful to improve your score to 95 to 100 So if you are getting around seventy or sixty, then that will helpful to improve your score to one ten or one fifteen. So try to join this course; it will be absolutely beneficial. And if you join this course, we are going to give you day to day schedule, right? So in this schedule, you will be revising each and every subject at least thrice along with the current affairs. Okay, try to join this. If you want to join this prelims booster course, you can call me or you can text me on this number. Eight zero seven four seven six double five one three. Okay, that is eight zero seven four seven six double five one three, and this WhatsApp number and even Telegram number. You can text me on either WhatsApp or Telegram, or you can directly make a call and you can talk to me directly. And this course is one of the best course, and it is a good opportunity that you can join. Okay, use this opportunity. And next one here is if you want to. So, if you want to get this class notes, you can join the Telegram channel. This is our Telegram channel, Rathor's IES classes. So there, we will be posting the notes every day, so that you can download the notes here. And if there is any important update, so we will be posting here. And this is our Rathor's IES Academy YouTube channel. So please do subscribe to this channel. Okay. And next one is this is our website. so the thing i said right uh, that is prelims booster course so i said you will be getting the prelims test series so that prelims test series you are going to write here okay here in this prelims test series you can write okay so the actually the cost of this prelims test series is 
but we are providing you the daily test along with the live classes so the cost here is 4500 rupees and even we are going to start the new batch of mains answer writing course of this december so if you are facing problem in answer writing and uh, structuring of content and if you are lacking content and if you are having uh, problem in time management and word management you can join this course of daily mains answer writing so you will be getting daily one mains question and we are also going to provide modal answer and there will be evaluation of your answers and there will be live doubt clearing sessions on every sunday or monday and the next one is uh, we are also going to have essay writing online so we are writing essay online okay so this is a very very useful course and even if you can't pay the amount in one go you can pay in two installments that is 4101 go okay so these are the some important things i have to say okay so that's all today so if you really like the class hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the starter science academy thank you so much for watching